Hello everybody, I hope everyone is doing well and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be trying out a bunch of new products. Some of them are new to the market, some of them are just new to me. I have some really exciting ones sitting in front of me, especially these things right here. These are the M Cosmetics Cosmic Pearl Dewy Eyeshadows. I just received these yesterday. I did swatch a couple shades and the texture is really, really cool. So I'm excited to see how they perform on the eye. I was about to like name everything new in front of me, but that's just going to be a waste of time. You're gonna see them all within this video. So before we get into it, I'd love for you to subscribe if you aren't already. It means so much to me and let's get to it. I'm going to be starting off with a primer today and I'm going to try out this soft matte primer from NARS. I'm just gonna take a good dollop. It feels just like a moisturizer thicker moisturizer. I think I went in with a little bit much there. I thought it was going to be more silicone-y feeling. I think that looks nice. That's interesting. I was not expecting this amount of softening and blurring from this product. Usually with blurring products, they're a little bit translucent, but this one was full on white, but I don't know. I like how that looks so far. So now I'm going to be trying out the Tarte Hydroflex Serum Foundation. And I have the shade 20S Light Sand. And it says here to shake well. I purchased this like a million years ago, it feels like. I just bought a shade that was a bit too light for my summer skin. I have like zero tan left. I have not been out in the sun. <laughs> I'm assuming it's very liquidy. It felt like that while I was shaking it. Yeah, pretty liquidy. I haven't seen anyone talk about this. I think I'm gonna apply it with a brush just because I don't want it to get all in my rings, you know? This is a Royal and Langnickel complexion brush. Okay, that's a perfect shade for where my skin is at right now. I feel like this would have been better applied with my fingertips just because the brush is sopping a lot of it up since it is a very thin consistency. It is still applying a good amount of coverage and it is going on the skin nicely. I just think it wastes a bit more product this way. Okay, it's fully on now and I think the color might be just a little bit light. I'm looking a little ghostly, but it's okay. It looks so good on my skin. And on top of that NARS primer, it might have played a big part, but it looks so smooth and it was so effortless to use. This finish is kind of reminding me of a glowier version of the Fenty Beauty eavesdrops in a way. I think the Fenty Beauty one is a lot more blurring and there's a bit more coverage. I'm definitely getting a similar vibe. But now let's move along. I have this Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Concealer. I have the shade four. I think I have tried this. Or was it just featured in an Instagram Picks My Makeup video? It might have been that because I don't remember applying this. I don't know. It's hard to keep track of all the products I try sometimes. I hear a lot about the Luminous Silk foundation, obviously. I think that's probably one of the most popular foundations in general, but I don't really hear or see much about this concealer, but from what I'm seeing right now, it looks beautiful. It's very similar to obviously the foundation, and I love that stuff, but I don't really put it up to my eye. I have a little bit more redness here today. I'm just gonna kind of cancel that out just to add a red blush later on today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that looks really nice under the eye. And it's the same consistency as the foundation, kind of that thinner paint-like texture, but in a good way, packs a lot of coverage. I think that looks really nice and flattering. Now I have a new powder to try out. This is the Bare Minerals Original Mineral Veil. I have two shades. Ooh, a little puffy thing came out of the bottom. So it's one of those layered components. I have the shade Sheer Light and Translucent. I'm going to try the translucent one under my eyes and I might try this one on my face. I think that looks nice. It's subtly blurring and diffusing. I don't think it's as blurring as my Pat McGrath one or the Annabelle powder, but it does look pretty nice. I'd reach for that sometimes, I think. Really excited for this next step. It's time to add some color into my face and some dimension. I'm looking very washed out. This is the Perfect Bronze from Annabelle. Ugh, it has so much glitter in it. I just swatched it on the back of my hand and it looks very, very flaky. I wonder if the camera will pick it up. 
yeah I think I'm going to just try out something I already have in my collection I don't really see the point of applying something I know I'm not going to like I don't want to screw up my face for no reason you know so I'm just going to pop off camera apply bronzer and I'll be right back Okay, it's been a while. I also had lunch because I had a frustrating experience with my bronzer. I thought it'd be fun to try out the Huda Beauty Tan Tour again, but it was like pure orange against this foundation. So I had to alter it with a bunch of other things. I tried the Fenty Beauty Amber Cream Bronzer. It was way too light. It just looked chalky on my skin. And then I finally just reverted back to the M Cosmetics Terra So Soft Stick and it looks okay. <laughs> and I also did my brows so I could cool off from that little frustrating moment. So now it's time to add some blush and highlight and I actually have a duo here to try out. This is the Care Weiss Flesh and Glow in the shade Vibrant Ray. So I did swatch this so that's why you can see a little imprint but it has a highlighting side and a blushing side. So I'm going to start off with the highlighter and this does feel like a different consistency from the blushes I have. This one feels like a bit more moussey. I wonder if you can see what I'm doing here. Just tapping it, you can see it kind of looks whipped. So I'm interested to see how that goes. I'm just gonna take what I have on my finger to put on here. It's kind of a lackluster formula. Didn't really do much or excite me that much. I don't know, but let's see this blush color. I know that sounded a little bit harsh maybe, but I don't know, I feel like it didn't do much. I'm just going to take this Quo Beauty blush brush, and this feels and this feels like the same thing. It feels like that whipped one. It doesn't feel like the other blushes that I have from Care Weiss. It feels a lot more dry. This is the perfect color to do this technique with because it just looks like I have burnt skin. I'm just a big fan of that natural sun-kissed look, but in actuality, I look like the least sun-kissed person right now. That's a really cute color. I like it for the blush. I want to try out mixing the two formulas to see what I get. I feel like I'd yield a better result that way, but I think I'd keep this for this blush color because it's really, really cute. Now that I'm finished with creams and right before I move on to eyes, I want to set my face with this one. This is the shade Sheer Light. Wow, that looks really nice. So this one has like a little tint to it. You know what? This is giving me Charlotte Tilbury setting powder vibes, the one that I really like. But maybe this one's just slightly less blurring, but other than that, like I feel like I'm getting very similar experiences. I'm interested to see how it performs on top of other foundations um, because I know before going in with powder, I feel like my skin looked pretty blurred already. But now we've reached the point where I am assuming a lot of you have been waiting for. I'm going to be putting the Cosmic Pearl Dewy Eyeshadows from M Cosmetics to the test. I'm also going to swatch them all on my arm so you can get a feel for the shades. But these are really interesting. I did feel one up already, this shade right here. Wish and it has a very unique texture going into them I was expecting a similar texture to the ColourPop super shock shadows or the highlighters um, But it's not at all that it's so much more wet in texture It's really interesting because it's powdery But it's gel like and it's pillowy and it feels like a little souffle and it's just very very impactful like just a few taps in the component here I get that much payoff and when you apply it it just melts right into the skin that's just what I've noticed on the back of my hand like I said earlier I have not tried them on my eyes yet I'm just gonna pop off camera to swatch them all for you and I'll be right back so now I'm going to name them all for you so this one is Scorpius star child Venus Helios wish moonrise and Luna. From the swatches here, my favorites are these three right here. I think these ones are going to be my most used shades. I'm just gonna throw on some eyeshadow primer. This is the NARS one. I'm just going to throw in a little bit of a transition shade just so that my eyes don't really get lost. And I had the Patrick Ta eyeshadow palette on my desk and I'm just going to use this shade.
My under eyes are kind of looking bad. They're pretty creasy and textured. I don't usually experience like my concealer falling into these lines right here. So I'm gonna keep an eye out on that. By the way, I just saw online somewhere today that in a couple of months, the keep an eye out for a Selena meme is going to be 10 years old. That Beauty and the Beat song is 10 years old soon. What? I think that kind of ruined my day this morning. I'm first going to take some of the shade Wish just with my finger and I'm just going to spread this all around with my finger. Wow, that is gorgeous. That is so nice. And I'm just going to put a little bit of Luna down the middle. This one's a bit more cooler in tone. So I thought it would add like an interesting contrast. And I also wanted to see how a couple of the shadows layered and it looks like they're layering nicely. I do have a few reservations about these shadows since they are so dewy in the pan. I wonder if it's going to crease on me, especially because I have extremely oily eyelids. So we'll see. But right now it feels really nice. But now for mascara, I have this really interesting innovative thing from Kaja Beauty. So there's three mascaras in one and you can separate them all. It reminds me of those push pops. So you get a clear one, a lengthening one, and a volumizing one. I'm for sure going to be trying out the volumizing one. I am a little bit interested to see if this is uncomfortable to apply because this is kind of like an awkward shape to hold to apply mascara, but we'll see. So here's the wand for the volumizing one. Yeah, it is a little awkward to get a good grasp on the handle and the formula feels a bit drier and kind of gloopy in a sticky sense so it doesn't really follow through that nicely but it is building so it's just my first impressions but let's see how it builds up Okay, that did take quite a while to apply, but I think the effect is pretty. Uh, I think I'm going to try the lengthening one on my lower lashes. I just want to see what the wand looks like on this side. So the wand for the lengthening one is a plasticky one, and the volumizing one is like a normal fluffy classic mascara wand. I almost dipped the volumizing one in the lengthening one. Ooh, I would have messed up my whole thing here. Okay, let's see how this goes. Okay, I don't think I really like that on the lower lashes. It looks a little spidery for my liking, but I'm just gonna roll with it today. And why not? Let's put the clear one through my brows. I already have brow gel in here, so it's not gonna do anything, but just for fun, why not? <laughs> okay, let's move on to lips. Oh no! Yeah, so my final quick thoughts about this thing, I don't know if I'll use it much, but I like the concept. I think it's really cool. I just think it took a really long time to get my lashes to this point, and I have mascaras that do this kind of effect really quickly, but very innovative. I like to squish it. But for my lips, I don't have anything new, but in my last decluttering video when I tackled my eye products and my lip products, someone asked about this palette. This is the Rouge Powder Lip palette <laughs> and it was such a good question because I hadn't seen this for months and this thing actually fell behind my drawers so thank you to whoever asked about this palette thank you for reminding me about this thing I've only used this once since I lost it so I really want to revisit it since it's been a couple months I think I'm just going to go right ahead with this bright red I'm in the mood so I'm just going to line my lips quickly with the MAC cherry lip pencil And I'm just going to apply it with my finger. And this is the powder one. It doesn't really feel like a powder when you swatch the actual product. It feels like, it feels kind of creamy and buttery, but when you apply it onto your lips, it's super, super powdery feeling. It's really cool. So impactful, it's so cool. I rarely ever go for reds this bright. 
I usually go for reds that are a bit more muted or oxblood. This is like pure fire truck red. Such amazing payoff for something I'm just applying with my finger. It looks so velvety, it looks amazing on camera. How fun is that? I think that's one of the most beautiful reds that have ever graced my lips. <laughs> That is so nice. I think my favorite thing about it is it looks so velvety, but it doesn't enhance my lip texture at all. Love that. Okay, so we've reached the end of the look. I really like how it turned out. There's a few things that I'm not a fan of. One of them being my under eyes. I feel like they look very textured. I don't know if that's the concealer's fault or the powder's fault, but everything else looks pretty good. I don't know if this foundation is my favorite, to be honest. Now that I'm looking up close to my face, it looks like it's kind of gathered in some areas or it looks like it's starting to separate and it doesn't look as soft anymore. That could be because of the primer, but I feel like it's the serum foundation just because it did have a bit of glow. I don't know, I feel like it's kind of disappearing. Like I see some of my blemishes coming through a bit more and it's really catching around my drier areas or my healing acne spots. I don't know if I like it very much anymore. I really love the blush color. I wonder if they have a single of that without the highlighter because the highlighter was not my favorite. But I'll see once I mix these two products up one time, I'll see if it changes my mind. But I think my number one favorite thing out of the new things I tried out today were the M Cosmetics eyeshadows. They look so pretty. I'll try to do a wear test today because I'm going to be wearing this look for a bit now. Um, so I'll pop in a couple hours just to see if the eyeshadows have moved around or creased on me at all But I think that's it from me at this point in time. So I'll see you in the checkup. Hi <laughs> So it's been a little while. I just finished watching a horror movie with my stepsister So I'm currently kind of freaked out of my own house We watched the new conjuring movie. It was really good. It was a good story. I like those movies a lot Anyways, this is not a movie review <laughs> It hasn't been too much time since I last saw you guys. It's been around almost five hours and I already want to wash my face off. Um, I don't really love my base anymore. I really like the blush, but that's about it. I feel like the foundation is a bit emollient. It looked really, really good when I first applied it, but as it was settling and just sitting on my face, kind of adapting with the warmth of my skin, I feel like the serum kind of broke up and it feels really, really wet, I guess, on my face, if that makes any sense. I just am very aware that I'm wearing makeup. It feels a little bit heavy in a way that I just don't really love. I feel like it doesn't look horrible, but when I look at my face in the mirror, I see it kind of curdled and separating around my mouth area. I really don't like the under eyes today. The combination of powder and concealer I used today is a no-go. I don't think I'll ever do that again. I just feel like my face feels expired, <laughs> you know? But anyways, moving past the base and now moving on to the eyes, I'll bring you guys a little closer. Closer. I don't want you guys to get too close. I'm just kidding. The eyeshadow definitely creased a little bit, but it's nothing like I was expecting. I didn't touch up anything. I just left my skin be. Um, so you can see a little tiny creasing, but nothing too major. I just want to see if I can kind of pat it out easily. This isn't uncommon with shimmer shades for me, but sometimes when I try to tap it out, um, the shadow just leaves completely from my lid, but in this case it just kind of spread out again nicely. I think it still looks really pretty. I think I'd use them time to time. I f they really felt unique to me and the effect was as well. I really like how non-texture enhancing they were for shimmers. Um, so that little line of creasing after a long time doesn't super bother me. I feel like it redistributed nicely, you know? But I think that's it for me. I'm ready to have a shower and get into my cozy bed. So let's rewind to past Julia for the outro. So that's going to be it from me today. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and found it fun and helpful. If you did, please give this video a like. It would help me out so very much. I'll make sure to link all of the products I used in today's video in the description down below as always, and I will see you in the next one. Love you. Bye.